This week on Recall TV, we head to Hawaii, America's very own tropical paradise, where I'll be joining the almost one million visitors who come here every month to drink draft Mai Tais, stand in line at the all-you-can-eat buffet, and sun my carcass on a beach. Actually, screw that. We're going to go and see the real Hawaii, so we're linking up with some locals who are very passionate about what they do, starting with Neil Kamamura. He'll be acting as our guide. So, stick around, join us, as we're going hunting and gathering island style. The first time I met Neil was at SHOT Show this year and he swung by the booth. We struck up a great conversation, hit it off right off the bat and discovered we had an awful lot in common. Nobody great comes from an easy life. Everything has come from hardships. I had that history of my great grandpa being a bladesmith and a blacksmith. For me, I knew that there was only one option. You know, it's either die or be great. What knife making had given me was the ability to pour my heart into something. And it gave me values in which it helped me learn to love myself and allow good things to happen. Neil Kamamura came up with the idea of visiting Hawaii, but not just getting off of an aircraft and doing the whole tourist thing. So for the next couple of days, we're going to be hunting and we're gonna be gathering, and we're gonna be collecting produce to cook with, and we're gonna break everything down with my knives, and we're gonna show how capable they are and their different uses. So that immediately appealed to me because it incorporates all the things that I love, such as going out and finding your own food. So on our visit to Hawaii, we're hugely privileged to have Danny Bolton whose family own a couple of different properties on Kona, which are absolutely stunningly spectacular. We're about 2,000 feet up off the ocean, and we have over 100 acres of coffee, bananas, all the bananas you could ever eat, and they're the apple bananas too, the small ones, and you try them. Oh man, I have to, yeah, I have to tell you, these are not like the regular bananas you find in the supermarket in the mainland. These things just have a flavor all of their own. We have avos, macadamia nuts, we have breadfruit. Here's some of the breadfruit. We call it ulu, but those are some of the big breadfruit trees that we use. Stuff, all things that we use at our Forcia Table event as well. But having access to that kind of land, that kind of property that shows the incredible diversity of plant species up here, the animals which are just taking advantage of and running riots on it. I mean, there is a lot of stuff for people to eat and a lot of stuff for animals to eat also. One of the things that we're going to be doing this week is hunting, and we're hunting for non-native invasive species that, you know, they have a negative impact on the environment here in Hawaii anyway, so taking their numbers down just a little bit helps the native flora and fauna. The fact that they are delicious and tasty and can be made into fantastic meals is an added bonus. The pigs, they kind of need to be hunted. There's, there's an invasive species, there's a ton of them here, but they root the ground and they dig up rocks and they kick them up in the rows and then when the mower uh, hits them, it busts the blades, so. That's gonna be both annoying and expensive. They're always giving me trouble, like, okay, you know, there's a lot of pigs and so, uh, it's good that we get to hunt them and get to feed friends and family. I mean, one pig goes a long way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we had my cousin come up today. He just went out by himself fishing the other day, <laughs> loaded up on mahis and onos by himself in the wind and the rain, and brought us two fish today. And man, that's so that's much meat that can, that can feed so many people. You know, everybody knows that if you're going fishing, then you probably get up at oh god o'clock. So we did and then went on down to the boat, jumped on board, and the boat that Chris Choi is captaining is this beautiful old 
restored twin screw diesel powered cruiser. My name is Captain Chris Choi from Kona, Hawaii. I was born and raised here. I've been fishing these waters for my whole life. I learned from a lot of good, influential old timers. No matter where I am in the world, I avoid buying fish in a supermarket or a restaurant because I'm a fisherman. And I, I don't care how good their fish is or what, like, I'll go out and catch my own and that's what I'm gonna do. It's now about 6.30 and we're headed out into the Pacific for a little surf and turf action. When we got on board, we're thinking, okay, here we go. We're going off and we're going, we're going trolling for, I don't know, seven, eight hours. So let's get comfortable, let's get chilled. Let's go and open a beer, let's get some breakfast. And everybody's just sitting around, not thinking of anything much when- We'll let it go, we'll take our time to catch and sure enough, it's fish on time. And we were literally 20 minutes into this whole escapade when it was time to go fight. And none of us were ready for it. I say we're all, all relaxing at that point, but it was a case of, okay, game on boys. Let's go get this thing into the boat. Everything you do up on the tackle transmits down the line. So you gotta be kind of yep. nice and smooth with it. But in the other hand, aggressively smooth at home. <laughs> That's his nickname, aggressively yeah. smooth. <laughs> that thing did not want to come in. I mean. You know, it's fighting for its life and you know, you have to put up an awful lot of effort in order to get it in the boat. And at any one point, you know, it could create some slack in the line, break the line and be gone. How's that, dude? That's beautiful. That's a straight wireless. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I did to it. First 45 minutes of yeah, the that's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever caught a fish anywhere near that size. Normally they'd be about that big. <laughs> I think over 100 pounds. It's beautiful. When you know where you want to live, you know where you want to die, and who you are as a person, that's what allows us to follow our passion absolutely to the full. Under Chris Choi's expert tutelage, we managed to get it into the boat and then it was back to the docks and time to go cut it up and make some delicious sashimi. Texture, right. mouthfeel, striped marlin, it's just incredible. This is the first one, first big fish I've ever caught. This is Hawaiian cut, not Japanese cut. Bro, it's a steak. Cut. I can show you my way, I can show you my way. It feels cut. I, I try not to handle it with my hand, so when you, you always use the toe of your knife, you set it over the side and just push it down. From the heel to the toe, one stroke, and then just press it off your knife. My dad always taught me your knife should be like an extension of your, your hand. <laughs> Thank you, Sapo, for taking me out on this incredible adventure. And we look forward to taking some of this and sharing with friends tomorrow. In a world that we live in that's full of technology, it's always the easiest, quickest, cheapest route. It's, you know, it's like if a hand touches it, it's lost its value in production, right? So for me, I live in a different world. The more I touch it, the more expensive it is. We're doing the structure that's gonna sustain the lamb that we're gonna roast. It's a traditional Argentinian way. It's the lamb al asador. So we're doing the base of it and he was gonna forge it and get it done. You know, when you're taking something and you're forcing it and beating it and creating something with fire, your two hands and a hammer, it's something that just can't be replicated. It's something that every time you do it, it'll be a little bit different. It'll have uh, a little uniqueness to it and it'll be a beauty that you can't ever create with a machine. 
whatever they hunt, we're gonna cook it, hopefully a sheep or a lamb. And we're gonna do it up in the farm. That's got a beautiful view of the Pacific Ocean. It's slow cooking and it takes about six, eight hours depending on the size of it. So you wanna have a room to play with it when you want it like closer to the fire or not. You can definitely do it like super basic, just a stick on the ground and then you control it manually, but that's when all crafts come together that he can actually make a super cool structure for me to cook with. That's awesome. Flora should not exist in the shadow of Neil Kamamura because Flora is such a strong personality. She's so passionate about what she does. She's this expert when it comes to creating really beautiful food that is a has multiple layers of flavor and texture throughout it. Hawaii sells itself as this tropical paradise, and obviously there's a great deal of truth to that. However, one of the things that they don't tell you is that in order to get all this green behind me, you need a lot of rain. And boy, did we get a lot of rain. So I get off the plane and immediately you're enveloped in this funky fog of 100% humidity, uh, around about 85 degrees, and then the heavens open and we were sitting in rain for about two, three days while we were here. And in fact, you know, it's one of those constants, you have to plan for it, and if you don't, then you're gonna be miserable. How's that improvised country working out for you brother? I got drinking water too. <laughs> in addition to feral pigs, which were introduced here in centuries past, there's also feral sheep. Now, normally you think, oh, I'm going sheep hunting, you either think of way high alpine stuff, or you think, oh, I'm just gonna stick something in a pen. Um, this is not the case. These are kind of domestic sheep that came in from Europe, but have since gone feral and wild. And they're as spooky as anything I've ever hunted. Danny managed to arrow a sheep and he's taken off down that direction to go and try and find the blood trail. So he's going to hang out for a little while, see what he comes up with, and hopefully we'll get the sheep on the table tonight. We'd have mountain lions, all the things that would normally knock down the populations. Uh, we don't have those, so hunting plays an important role. I don't enjoy hunting. It's not really my thing. I think it's important to know how to produce your own meat and not be relied upon by a supermarket or a store but in the same regards sitting in the rain waiting for an animal to come out is i'd rather be making knives <laughs> at this point if we need to put meat on the table there's a herd of cows over there that's all avocados right there they're in there. Dude. They'll be in there tonight, and then they come down out of there. You know, I've hunted wild pigs on the mainland US quite a bit, and for the most part, they're pretty lean. And the reason for that is they have to work pretty hard for their existence. Out here, however, the boars that we were hunting the other night were feasting on avocados and macadamia nuts. So both high protein, high fat content foods, as you can imagine, there's a lot of fat on these pigs too. Yeah, they're different. Uh, more hair, more uh, black hair on them up here, bigger tusks. Yeah, sometimes miracles happen. So, yeah, I'm just happy it all came together. It's the end of our Day's pig hunting here in beautiful Kona. Had a little bit of bad luck this afternoon and I hit a branch. Um, I put a stalk on a big sounder of fairly sizable pigs. Danny, however, has a pig down over here, so that's barbecue time. We're gonna field dress it now and get it ready for the big celebration on Monday. That's the hardest part right there. That's the puna right there. So it's like a protective plate right there. Mm -hmm. So when they fight, yeah, with their tusks. Really? They like try to stab each other right there in the lungs. 
because they're fed on extremely high quality produce, boy do they taste good. Once you do look a little deeper, Hawaii is actually a pretty tough place to make a living. And the guys who do that and who live here full time, they're tougher individuals than you might think, particularly when it comes to those guys who make their living with their hands. We see that with Neil, you know, we see that with the Bolton family. If you guys want to come to Hawaii, bring your bows, bring your firearms, come kill some pigs, come kill some turkeys, come kill some Axis deer, and put some meat on the table. As part of this forged to field to table experience, Hola, senor. we got to go with Flora and Neil and set up an outdoor kitchen and then cook in a very slow time this incredible meal. I feel like if you never cooked anything, you will be able to cook something over the fire because it's it's in intuitive. It's it goes it comes from so long ago that it's still in everybody, I think. She's this expert when it comes to creating really beautiful food that a, has multiple layers of flavor and texture throughout it. And I think the reason for that is that she has adopted her Hawaiian identity and infused it with her gaucha identity. I came up with this idea to do this event because that's the way we live. You know, I hand make everything and she cooks with it. Hawaii and Brazil are very similar in many ways. You have an abundance of food and fruits and you know you have the ocean you also have the beef and pig so it's I think it's we both are very abundant places and I think combining these two cultures you get the the same feeling at the end. I'd asked her a year ago you know what do you want to do and she says I want to cook what I want to cook. As you might have figured out from the previous few days, we're in Hawaii in the rainy season. So a big storm just rolled in. It's not damping anybody's enthusiasm and we're about to serve up. Same thing I tell my boys, if you want to do anything in life, you have to pour everything in. You cannot be half foot in. I have no idea how to explain this, but it just feels like you get inspired, like, you know, like, you watch something happen in front of your eyes and just boom, you get inspired, you want to do it. That's kind of how it feels like to me. I might not show it most of the time, but I feel it. <laughs> you can't be doing it just to let time pass. My name is Brian Smith, and I'm very proud to be Neil Kamimura's son. He's able to leave that legacy with us, leave that, leave that stepping stone for us to take the next, next step with our, our work. True that, true that. Uh, <laughs> it's not just an event and it's not just food that people are eating. I think we, we combine our crafts and we make something that's healing and, and that showcase both of our cultures. I saw that in Flora. She works so hard. She put her time in. You know, she trained under the right people. She learned what she could and she poured it all into one. And that's why we're able to be with such a talented group. Every time that I challenge myself or that I do something new, and I definitely feel very empowered and, uh, you know, definitely want to inspire other women to, to do that too. In one year time, we were able to pull it together with Danny, Flora, and I, and, uh, and it's an experience, but her talent and for what she does comes through in her food. She pours her heart and soul and cares more about whether you enjoy it and it tastes good than anything else. And she holds herself to a high regard as far as being a purist and not compromising. These dudes just go out and they perform and they don't complain. It doesn't matter if you're out like Danny for seven, eight hours after driving an hour and a half to go and get a sheep because that had to happen because we had that event coming up. When the pressure is on, 
And when the chips are down, these guys do actually deliver the goods. I really didn't know what to expect coming in here. However, I do know that if you come to Hawaii, you owe it to yourself to dig a little bit deeper because the stories behind the scenes are way more interesting. Neil, you unlucky motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs>